Hey guys, it's Chef Tom here. Today we're gonna to talk about the perfect knife set for you. I was recently asked by a friend, what kind of knife set should I buy? My answer is, buy the knives that you need when you need them. When you buy a knife block set, the price is distributed throughout all those knives and some of those knives you may never use. So my solution to that is just to buy the knives that you need as you need them. And you can buy a, a universal knife block that'll fit nicely with your style the space that you have. As you can see on the back wall there, I use a knife strip. Save space, I can see what knives I have easily. So you can buy better quality knives and you can upgrade the knives easier as you go along. Uh, when you have a knife block set, it's harder to upgrade those knives because you're stuck with the particular size of the slot that that knife fits into. When you buy knives separately and start creating your own set, you have a set that is personalized to your needs and your style. So what style of knives are there? Well, you have your classic chef's knife. This is an eight inch chef's knife. It has more of a rounded belly here. It's like a Western style knife. This knife right here has not so much of a round belly. As you can see, when it goes down, it continues getting wider and wider. When it increases in width going all the way down, you can't get that rocking motion as well. Like if you're trying to chop parsley or you're trying to do a rocking slicing motion, it doesn't work as well when it's flat. So I would say probably don't want that kind of knife. Now this knife, I've had this knife for probably 15 years. I got it in culinary school. Um, it has more of a rounded belly. The rocking motion is a little bit better, is a lot better actually. Uh, it takes up less space on your cutting board. The shorter the knife is, the more precision you have, the tip is closer to where your hand is so you can get a little bit more precise. And that's why I like the eight inch chef's knife. Um, this is also an eight inch chef's knife. Uh, this is a Shun, considerably more expensive. I'd say it's uh, kind of the, the cream of the crop, if you will. This is a 10 inch chef's knife. This is also one I got from culinary school. The longer the chef knife, the more you can cut at once, um, but it's a little bit more harder to use. I would say that the chef's knife will be one of the first knives that you want to buy. Also, you have the choice of going with a Santuco blade. Um, the difference between a chef's knife and a Santuco is that the edge here is curved. And this one has these little rivets along the edge that helps prevent items from sticking to the knife. Like say you're slicing potatoes that potato might stick on there and then you have to slide it off. But I personally don't use the Santuco. Um, it has more of that flat edge to it as well, but they are pretty much interchangeable. Uh, next is a bread knife or a serrated knife. This right here is one of my favorite knives and you might not think that this is a great knife just by looking at it, but I use this knife almost every day and I have one set for work as well. This knife is extremely sharp. This is a Victorinox seven and a half inch serrated knife. I use it as like an all purpose knife. Now, it doesn't work very well for that chopping motion that I described with the chef's knife. That's one of the only things that it doesn't do very well, but it's shorter so you can have more like precision when you're cutting. And this beast is sharp, man. Like one of the downsides to having a serrated knife is you can't sharpen them. So I've basically had this knife. I've been using this knife for about a decade and I've probably bought about five of them in that time. But the price isn't that much. I think it's like a little over $20 for this knife. And I would suggest getting one of these for sure. Uh, this is more of a classic style bread knife because this one's longer. You can slice larger loaves of bread. One thing to think about when you're using a bread knife also is this one's not offset, but there's ones that are offset where the handle kind of goes up a little bit more. And that gives your knuckles more room because as you can see right here, my knuckles are touching the cutting board. So if I wanted to go all the way down on a piece of bread, I would have to move my hand off the table. Next, this is a more of a utility knife. Now this has a really nice place. Like it's smaller than the chef's knife. It has that kind of classic chef's knife look though. So you could almost use it. It's kind of like a stop between a paring knife and a chef's knife. Now you can cut more delicate things. Like you can still cut potatoes or onions with this. And uh, definitely like a decent knife to have in your collection. Um, so I have paring knives here. I have two different paring knives. Uh, this one is not a paring knife. This is a tournée knife. It only has one purpose and that's the tournée potatoes. I'm not going to get into detail with what that is, but it's pretty much useless. Let's throw that knife away. 
So yeah, I have two different paring knives here. One's like a shorter one. One is like a serrated one. They both have their place. I mean, you definitely want to have a paring knife in your collection as well. You use a paring knife for like coring or peeling or even like really fine dice work. Like say you're peeling like shrimp or something or just really fine detail work like cutting lemons or limes or whatever. You can put this on your cutting board and I mean, it's just easy to use. The smaller the knife, the more easy it is to use in smaller spaces. Uh, next we have boning knives uh, for butchering meat, removing silver skin, breaking down poultry, um, beef, fish, whatever, removing bones. Now you have, um, I have three different bony knives here. These two, they look the same, but this one's flexible and this one is stiff. The flexible one kind of can't, like say you're breaking down a chicken or a turkey or something, that knife will follow the contours of the bone more easily if it bends, or say you're breaking down some fish. Um, it's really good to follow the contours of the bone when you're butchering meat. That's why they call it a bony knife. Now this one is a little bit more sturdier. You can like kind of scrape the meat off of bones a little bit easier and not worry about it. It's just more solid. Uh, this is also a bony knife, but the thing about it, uh, this one is kind of more of a, like an arch to it. And that's for dealing with stuff that's closer to the bone. Next we have a slicer. Um, they're for like slicing large pieces of meat, like say a prime rib or slicing through a big cake. Uh, the longer blade lets you slice through like a larger cake without having to get the handle in the way. Also, they usually have like a thinner profile right here. Um, the thinner profile means that there's less knife to go through the cake and it's just easier for it to move through the cake without like disrupting the um, like the design or the beauty of it. Um, or you can slice like cured smoked salmon. That's one of the reasons I got this knife is I was cutting a lot of cured smoked fish. And when you're slicing, you want that finesse to keep that piece intact without shredding it. That's what this knife is really good for. Plus it also, this knife also has those rivets. This is a Japanese knife. Um, this is a shun and it's super sharp. It's also very brittle. So like if you drop this knife on the floor, it could chip very easily. I've seen a lot of these knives chipped. So um, a lot of these have the tips broken off of them. It stays sharp forever as opposed to a Western style knife. These things are, they, these things can really take a beating. Um, they're softer, the metal's softer. So I'd say it might dull a little quicker, but it's also easier to sharpen. If you drop this thing on the ground, you're not gonna chip it or anything. Um, you might bend the tip, but you can oftentimes work that tip back without cracking it. You also have forged metal versus stamped metal. You can kind of tell by the quality and like of the knife just by feeling it or even looking at it, whether it's forged or stamped. Uh, usually the cheaper knives are stamped. This one's stamped. These ones are forged. Usually a forged knife will have this thing, this metal going all the way through the handle, which means like pretty much the entire body of the knife is going all the way down. The forged knife, yeah, it has that going all the way down it. So that's like part of the metal of the blade and then it has whether it's a wood handle or a plastic handle attached to the edge. Um, forged knives typically don't have that. They just kind of end in the handle. So next let's talk about price. Uh, price is determined by the brand of the knives that you buy. Like this is a, these are knives I got in culinary school. They're a Mercer. Um, they are very good um, general purpose knives. They'll last you pretty much a lifetime. Um, but this on the other hand, this is a shoon. Now, if you're gonna go high-end knife, I would suggest getting shoon. They are more brittle, but they are very, very sharp. I would suggest if you're starting off with your knife set to go more on the cheaper end, I'd say a really good brand to start off with. It's kind of a middle of the road brand is the Victorinox. This is one of my favorite knives, as I mentioned. Uh, this is a Victorinox. This is a Victorinox, and they have this antimicrobial plastic 
handle. You can probably get the chef's knife for around 25 to 30 bucks. This knife is like 20 to 25 bucks. I think this knife was 20 bucks. I think this is probably like 15 bucks. You have brands like Wustoff, Global, Henkel, uh, Mac. Those are all very good brands of knives. Those are knives that I've used and I would suggest getting. Not to say that you can't buy like a really cheap knife like this. This thing probably costs like 10 or 15 bucks. Like the thing with like buying a shoon is it's so brittle. Like you don't want to be hacking away at like say some like winter squash and chip your knife. So I have several like, I have this knife for more like delicate, like chiffonading basil, like cutting delicate meats that I want to be intact. Uh, this thing can really take a beating right here. You can like hack through like pumpkins or you can hack through like acorn squash or whatever and not really care about it. So yeah, I mean, if you're choosing a brand of knife specifically, I would just look at reviews or see if you have somebody that you can like use their knife or when you go to the store, see if you can hold the knife because it's all about being comfortable for you. A lot of knives, like you want the knife to be comfortable in your hand. That's one of the biggest things. Uh, things with heavier knives that are thicker and heavier duty is they're harder on your hands. If you're cooking like all day and chopping all day, uh, this might kind of strain your hand after a while. Whereas a lighter knife will be a little bit easier on your hands. Uh, this is like a really light knife. Uh, smaller knives are better for smaller spaces. Like this is a little bit more cumbersome when you're working in a confined space. That's why I like to go with the eight inch chef's knife. Smaller knives in general have more accuracy because the tip of the knife is closer to where your hand is. When you're using a bigger knife, that tip is like further away. You might not be as accurate as you want to be. There's all kinds of different handles. There's these uh, kind of Western style German knives that have this little thing at the end that kind of holds your hand into place. Um, that can be comfortable. Uh, these Japanese style knives, they kind of, they're, this one's round, but it has a flat edge right here. And this is designed, this is designed for a right-handed person. So if you're left-handed, definitely check out the handedness of the knife. Um, the only, the only thing that makes this a right-handed knife is this part right here that kind of fits in your finger right there. It's easier to hold. You, it may be comfortable for you. I don't know. I'm, I'm right-handed. Like this knife has like a grip to it. It kind of stays dry easier. It doesn't slip out of your hand. Um, like this knife here has like kind of like finger grips on it, which may be comfortable. Like a thing with like a global knife, which is all a one piece metal construction that might feel slippery in your hand. It's just, it's a matter of personal taste really. Also something that has to do with comfort is the balance of the knife. So this knife right here is more top heavy, which means that it probably goes through food easier, but it takes more effort to like kind of move it around. Um, this knife is more kind of back heavy kind of wants to go backwards, which means it takes a little bit more effort to kind of push down on it. This knife right here is really back heavy. Regardless of where it's balanced at, you're gonna pretty much grab it right where that center of balance is when you're cutting. So it's like wherever your hand feels comfortable, like cutting it, like this one, I'd probably go back a little bit more just to have that balance and that comfortable grip. So yeah, I, my takeaway from being comfortable is just make sure that you hold the knife before you buy it, especially if you're buying a more expensive knife. If you're not and you're just kind of dipping your toes into the water, um, just go maybe a base off of like reviews or whatnot. So I'll make some suggestions for the knives that I think that uh, would work good for you based on price. These are all knives that I've used personally. I have multiple chef knives because I've just kind of accumulated them over the years. Some of them are gifts, some of them were from school, some of them for work and home. I'd say if you're gonna have multiple knives, you probably wanna have a chef's knife, like especially if you're cooking with somebody, like my wife will use a chef knife at the same time I'm using a chef's knife. So uh, that's a good reason why to have multiple maybe chef's knives. But starting out, you could probably just get one of each. So yeah, if I was gonna have a knife set, I would suggest having something like this as a beginning knife set. 
You have like an eight inch chef's knife with a rounded belly. You have a serrated knife of some sort. This one is also kind of fulfills the utility knife aspect because it's shorter. Uh, this is one of my favorite knives, Victorinox seven and a half inch serrated. A paring knife, good for trimming, coring, really small delicate work also. A boning knife for cutting down and breaking down meat, removing silver skin, breaking down chickens. A thin slicer with a thin profile. It's good for slicing through like maybe cakes. It's longer, um, it has a thin profile so it won't disturb the surface of a cake as easily. Uh, it's good for like really delicate cured meats. Uh, kitchen shears, indispensable. Uh, good for all kinds of things. Cutting fat or skin off, cutting the shell off of a shrimp, cutting packages, cutting uh, cheesecloth, cutting string, whatever. A uh, honing rod of some sort or some sort of sharpener. Uh, you definitely want to get a honing rod because you don't want to sharpen your knife every time it gets kind of dull. Like if you just run it across the honing blade, instead of the knife being like, the knife tip being like this when it's dull, the honing rod will bring it back to a sharp point. Um, you don't necessarily need to take metal off the blade at that point. You don't need to sharpen your knife every week or so. You might sharpen it every like month or a couple months, depends on how much you use it. Um, so when it comes to knife blocks, I would suggest getting a universal knife block or like say a magnetic strip like I have on the back wall over there. Uh, the, the universal knife block, you, you want to get one that can fit as many knives as you're going to actually build in your collection. You want one that's going to be able to be cleaned easily. Now you can get one that fits in your drawer, you can get one that fits on the wall. It's more about organization or style, whatever your personal needs may be. Another option for knife storage is one of these carrying cases. It has multiple levels to it. Um, you can fit, like if you're going back and forth between work and home, you can pretty much do something like this. Uh, I hope you found this video informational. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe.